Welcome back to the channel. Today we are in the Arizona Cardinals playbook looking at gun wing slot week. And I really like this scheme. It's it's a very RPO heavy scheme. I'm going to come out and double post though. I don't want to say RPO heavy. We have two RPO plays that we're going to use as our, you know, pseudo run game type of deal. RPO peak and then RPO alert bubble. Those are going to be the two we run here. And I just, I mean, I really like how they work here as well. That you have one sort of going to the, in, you know, work in the middle of the field, the bubble work in the sidelines. And, and they're very easy to run, right? This is very beginner friendly, very, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe beginner friendly isn't even the right way to go about it, but it's something you can very easily uh, just stick into your scheme if you're in this playbook. If you have gun wing slot week in your playbook, it's something very easy to, to just add right in. So we'll start off with the RPO game here. Peak post, obviously uh, the guy above Jones here is, is, is who we're going to try to to read here if he blitzes. That's going to be a very easy completion. I know it says P over the middle linebacker, but we're going to be reading. We're going to be reading the slot man here. If he comes in, he does not. And then James James Conner, a little bit slow there. I mean, guys are going to be shedding up front. But here again, that again, they're going to make us want to read the middle linebacker. And we'll see. Not a whole lot of room there. And James Conner, not not very agile. Kind of like kind of like a. If you ever driven a boat before that's sort of what it's like like using james connor in this game but peak pass though here here maybe, maybe we get a good look maybe that middle linebacker is the guy with the p over his head here and the the guy we're supposed to be reading if he comes down i mean that he kind of looked like he was gonna blitz there he does not maybe could have got a completion there pretty tough and of course the rpo game i know we're getting a lot of a lot of sh runs here but the rpo game is very much something that you have to uh use in certain situations like here we have six guys in the box okay you know four down linemen two linebackers uh that's something okay we could we could probably work with that we have a we have a, a six man front with you know uh, with a wing tight end there so seven guys can block six i feel pretty good about that of course <laughs> our linemen up front are getting hoed very bad they're rarely getting um uh yeah i mean you can just see the jets i mean holy man i mean i know we leave this guy on block and we i know we leave him on block but but i mean we got two hog mollies on you, man. We got two of them. And he's just like, uh, who's that, Quentin Williams, I'm assuming? I'm assuming that's Quentin Williams. I would assume that's Quentin Williams. We're, we're just going to say that's Quentin. So, Quentin Williams is going is gonna to ruin the video for me. So, you get the idea. RPO peak. Um, we're going to use the RPOs in, in I don't want to say very certain situations, because it's, it's something you can, I mean, you see, on, you, you watch on Sundays. <laughs> Teams use these a lot. But it's something you want to use in only certain situations, right? Uh because you're not going to get a good run if you have seven guys in the box to stop the run on defense. Like here, they have four down linemen. We'll, we'll just go to the bubble here because we haven't ran that yet. You have four down linemen, two linebackers, and then even sort of like a nickel corner that could help stop the run there. So that's like seven guys. Um, you see kind of runs it with Y there. James Conner, get outside, brother. Oh, James Conner with the speed out there. <laughs> oh, look at that. Gannon with the little... Uh, that's new, I think. I don't think I've ever seen players interact like that. So that's pretty much it for the RPO game. I know we didn't hit any big runs here, but here, actually, let's run one against. Let's run one against the double mug look. I, I like running against that. We'll see if again. We'll see if uh, the guy over Jones blitzes in. He does not. James Conner's just so damn slow in this, and the offensive line in front is not good. So get a better offensive line. Don't use James Conner. Like, look at this shit. Like, look at this. I mean, and of course, this is going to be different too in your game because people are going to base a line. You're not going to have three DBs standing right like that, probably. I, I, I'm assuming this is probably a cover zero look here. But you're probably not going to have that, you know, that egregious of, a, <laughs> of of something to run into. So let's just run the ball, get out of this. Yeah, cover zero look. I didn't even run the ball. Let's just get out of that and uh, get into the passing game here. Okay, so starting the passing game here, let's start off with Mountain PA Verticals. And this is, again, we're trying to throw the ball down the field. We just did some short stuff with the RPOs. Let's try to throw the ball down the field. Here, let's put the other tight end. I like to put him on a corner as well. There's a few different things. You could put him on a corner, put him on a drag. You can block him as well in, in this, you know, as a, as a sixth offensive lineman type of deal. But I like to put him on a corner as well, sort of around that double corner. McBride running deep. Um, you know, your other tight end running running you know, a little bit shorter, and it sort of creates, like, it's going to put them in conflict over there. So here, we'll do that. Boom, boom. One of these guys, I mean, here, they actually got a little bit too close together there. And if that's happening, where, you know, guys are getting bumped and whatnot, and they're getting too close together in that PA verticals, that's where we can kind of put them on an out route. Maybe if you do put them on an out route, it, you know, sort of block your running back, get that six-man protection, especially if they have, you know, blitz coming from that side. And you're still, you're running smash to the right, and then you have, you know, Harrison on the deep one, and then, you know, Nine eight nine nine eight, and then we're running. We're on nine eight, and then we have a uh, smash on the right side. So, if you're if you're familiar with the digit system, there I, I got caught looking. I got caught talking. If you're familiar with the digit system, a nine is a go route, an eight is a deep post route like we have here, and then the concept on the right side of the field with uh, A and B is called smash. So that's where we're getting all those numbers and words from. 
But that's what we're trying to dial up. We're trying to hit Trey McBride. Oh, you see, he's, he's red here. He's, you know, that's the route we're trying to hit. Uh, Jones, I, I keep wanting to call him Jacoby Jones, but it's not Jacoby Jones. Um, Jones is going to be attacking that middle of the field if you get those cover two looks. And, yeah, that's pretty much here. We get man, though. We get man. Need a big tight end. And that's something you do. I mean, I know that's sauce over there, but that's something you do need to watch, too, this year. Throwing those crossers, throwing those corner routes. The DBs are doing a very good job of, of undercutting those and actually picking them off. So, something to watch this year. But PA Mountain Verticals, we're not getting any cover two looks as well. Um, something else you can do is, of course, turn this into basically a Z-spot play. Streak your other tight end, trying to hook up McBride on on that deep one. Shit, man, they just keep on... And that's what can happen too. But they just keep wanting to give us man. That, that's 99% of the issue here. Here we finally get maybe what could be a cover two look. Um, we'll just kind of throw him on a corner, block our running back here, and see if we can't attack that middle of the field. And nope, nope, we're going to get man as well. But that's sort of the area we're trying to work with that route. Uh, of course, of course, they're not going to play into our hand here. But that's okay. PA Mountain Verticals trying to throw the ball down the field. Trying to, here, we'll actually run one with a drag, something like that. Just sort of create, you know, with the running back in the tight end. Try to pull him up a little bit. Almost fit it in, Kyler. A little bit of a noodle arm for me there. Need those throwing abilities on you. Uh, but PA Mountain Verticals, I really like this one to throw the ball down the field, especially mixed with these RPOs here. Next one, PA Dagger. This is a super simple one here. I just block my running back to take the six-man front. Um, if you want to put McBride, if he's getting, if your tight end is on this drag here, is getting over to the flat a little bit too quick for you, um, I typically I would put him on an in route, just slow it down a little bit, make him take a few more steps down the field. You know, it takes a little bit longer to get across the field. But really, we're trying to hit Marvin Harrison out here. Jones is going to clear out down the slot, and then Marvin Harrison, um, ball on the break on the body is the idea. <laughs> don't throw, don't cut that, cut that. PA dagger, block a six man here. We're going to put McBride on the in, and here. He's going to carry him down the field. Shit, man. They just keep they keep giving us man coverage, man. The Jets are just locking us down with man coverage. Can't give us man every single damn time. Again. Do it again here. Here we go. And then we don't have enough time to throw up front. Cardinals might be rough this year, man. I I, I really like them. I really like what they had. But this is... <laughs> we're just getting the, we're getting the hell beat of us out, of, out front here, man. Four guys. Look at this. Four man rush. Four man rush. And they're just... That's tough. That's tough. All right, four-man rush, though. We'll just explain it. We'll explain it because they're not going to let me run a play. Here, we're using him as a clear out. Typically, you would like this guy to turn his back here and, you know, sort of run with, with the vertical and carry him. And that really opens up the space over the middle of the field. Now, you can kind of imagine if, if this guy ran with 12. I mean, you can see really all the open space here. But even regardless, I mean, if you can hold on to that ball for just another half a second, I mean, a lot of room for Marvin Harrison to, to uh, you know, be running across the field wide open there. But of course, and of course, I mean, hey, maybe if, uh, you know, you're getting that pressure a little bit, maybe you do leave McBride on the drag and, you know, try to get these a little bit easier completions like that across the middle of the field. Something to play with. Uh, but I really, I do like PA Dagger. It's just a very simple play. You're running Dagger to the right side of the field. Um, your other tight end is going to be your clear out. Another thing you can do here is, again, use that tight end as a clear out. Uh, Riemann, Ryman, whatever, however you say that, and then use McBride. Again, same thing on the corner route, but we've been running that a lot in this scheme, so maybe you don't want to do that here on Sauce Gardner. Sauce kind of gets bumped right there. A little bit messy in man coverage as well, but that's another thing you can do, you know, just to, so you're not running the same thing over and over and over and over again. Um, yeah, I just, I really like that as well. I don't really slant them across the middle of the field. Maybe you can slant them, I guess, if you wanted to, but I really don't want him going across the middle of the field. Like, I don't post them, because then that sort of interferes with you know, with what, with what Marv is doing here, sort of just muddies up the middle of the field more than it should. Here, we actually get the completion in the middle of the field like we were trying to dial up, of course, on the one where I say uh, it's going to muddy up the field. <laughs> but PA Dagger, very good pass play. Again, trying to throw the ball down the field. We're trying to, you know, dial up certain things. We're trying to hit certain things. So here we have double post. This will be the last one here. And again, very, very simple. Uh, pretty much all I do is just redrag McBride. Because if you look here, um, he can, uh, you can see by Jones, uh, he can stop there if it's against zone. Uh, he can, you know, sit down and settle in against zone and then keep going against man. I don't like that. I find that to be extremely inconsistent. I feel like uh, they stop when they shouldn't stop. They keep going when I don't want them to keep going. Uh, they don't just settle into a hole like you would see in, in, in regular football, you know, where you where a guy just, you know, sort of feels where, where the soft spot in the zone is. That doesn't happen here. He runs to a certain spot, and that's where he stops if he stops. So I like to redrag him so I know what he's doing every single time. And again, man, we're going to work that middle of the field with Jones here. I mean, you see that safety come down. Got to, got to complete the pass. Got to complete the pass. But you can see that safety come down a little bit, sort of get out of position here. And that's where we're going to attack those cover three looks too, as well as cover, as well as those cover two looks there. You can see they, they rotate into a cover three. 
and uh, I mean it's open, a lot of room, a lot of room. It's got to complete the pass, work in those seams as well as as well here. Hopefully we get a cover two look. Hopefully they stay in that shell. They don't. They come down. They're gonna play man. But that's why we could sort of keep that drag as well from from McBride. Oh my God, Trey McBride. But that's why we sort of keep that drag as well. You know, beat those man coverages and whatnot. Get a little, have something quick, have something quick in the arsenal to to go to here. But again, redrag him. James Conner is gonna be pulling out. Uh, he's gonna be pulling those zones out. He's not be pulling out. <laughs> he's gonna be pulling those zones out wide. Or if they don't get to him like that, you can kind of see here that the slot guy decided to. Uh, chuck 12 here, you know, decided decide to chuck him in, in inside five yards. Leaves James Conner wide open. If he doesn't do that here, if he doesn't, you know, sort of hit, hit the receiver here and sort of get him off his route, he's probably going to run with James Conner here, and then that's what's going to open up Trey McBride underneath as well. And then, you know, that, that's sort of what we're working with, uh, sort of closer to the line of scrimmage, and then throwing the ball up. I really like this one. This is a very nice, deep play. And, of course, you can hit that Jones route, that Harrison route, uh, I don't want to say a lot of the times, but I mean, that is definitely your big hitter here. I mean, they're going to blitz. No one over there. That's 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 very easy completion. This is probably my favorite play of the scheme here as well. Really like this, this Arizona book. Uh, there you can kind of see all the plays that we went with. But yeah, super simple scheme. Um, RPO heavy, RPO based. Oh, man. Oh, my God. He dropped. He was. Woo. I didn't. I didn't whew. Okay. Okay. Here, double mug look. We'll run just a couple more here. Finally. Damn Kyler Murray, man. Damn Kyler Murray. But you guys get the idea of the scheme. I can't complete passes. My guys won't block. I'm not very good. But hopefully you're better with it. We're trying, I, you know, hopefully you're a little bit better with it than I was here. But RPOs, very simple to run. We're trying to throw the ball down the field. Uh, you know, we're trying to dial up certain areas of, of the field that are a little bit harder to cover in Madden. And it's going to be down the field. Because we're doing the RPO game. We're running, you know, short passes, short runs, stuff like that. You want to be, have something to complement that. So, Arizona Cardinals playbook here. Really like this one. Kyler Murray, need a stronger arm. Offensive line, get better. But we'll work on that. So, if you guys enjoyed this one, uh, this is pretty much the content that we do here. This is this is similar style. Uh, offense, defense. Hopefully, we can get an ebook out a little bit later this year and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it here. We're going to be grinding these videos. Wasn't the most consistent in Madden 24 or Madden 23. But we're going to be we're gonna be doing it this year. We're going to be getting out as many videos as I can. Appreciate everybody liking, commenting, and subscribing here uh, as over the little hiatus. But we're back. We're going to be doing as many videos as we can on this game. And, yeah, appreciate you guys watching, tuning in, liking, commenting, subscribing, all that stuff. Let me know what you want to see next. And, yeah, thank you for watching. Peace.